such a powerful ministry. Ministry is just powerful. God is really moving um, just in a powerful way. God is moving by his spirit on this prayer call, this prayer ministry. I want to thank you all again for those of you who are on. And if you have not shared the call, I'm looking at the numbers. I can see the numbers. Um, over 100 people have not shared that are on being blessed this morning that are getting fed. So if you could just please share the prayer call or start a watch party, it will really help. Um, you know, one thing I will say about me is when I'm on a ministry call and I'm getting fed, I am going to share. Um, and, and a part of, you know, us really receiving from, from heaven and a receiver from the Lord is that we, we got to open up more. We got to share um, the ministry that you all are getting here is, is not just surface level stuff. Guys, these, these women of God are poor now. Um, we needed to share a powerful vision. You know, a vision is, is very prophetic. And I, I really believe that people don't really tap in uh, the way that they can or really uh, fulfill the plan of God for their lives because they're not coming into alignment with their books, with their blueprints in heaven. Uh, for those of you who have been coming to the prayer call, even this week I did a prayer live at the, at the last minute. Um, I just felt pulled to do a live. And I heard the word blueprints again this week. And for the last few months, probably a year, God has been having me to pray over my blueprints. But really, it's a book. It's a book about you in heaven. And um, we got to make sure that we are rejecting what the enemy has in his book, but we're saying yes to what God has in our book. Amen. So that was such a beautiful um vision that God had for you, um, Danita. And when Tiana was ministering, even about worship, I wanted to share something that um that I recently learned. And I learned it when I was um going through a a prophet um steer course that the Lord instructed me to go through with another prophet. And um I'm putting the phone up so those that are on the phone can hear me. But as I was going through the course, she said that everyone has like a war language. And she said, you need to pray and ask God was yours. And instantly, as I prayed, before I could get it out, the sin is out asking God, show me mine. Before I could get it out, he said, yours is worship. And I was like, wow, I, I thought it would be something else, really. I did, because she said that the Lord took her up to heaven um, and, and he began to share with her about the different languages that we have, you know, and some are praise. And she said that hers was praise. To be honest, I thought mine would have been prayer, right? So there's different languages. And when you operate in that particular one, you, you just carry more weight. And so I said, oh, wow. So I've got to be even more um, intentional about worshiping, worshiping the Lord. And speaking of prayer, um, this morning, the prayer um, that Aisha, the, 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 the scripture that Aisha read, and she also shared, of course, we're fasting, and um, we want to make sure that you encourage, we want to encourage you and also your families to pray the Lord's Prayer, um, teach your children in it. God is doing some, some incredible things, and we need prayer. Before I get into the lesson that I'm going to talk about, because I'm going to teach straight from the book, I, you know, I was like, God, can I just teach from the book, right? And there are times when God, you can just ask questions and he'll say yes, and he'll just show you <laughs> what you do, what you're going to do. And um, he said, yes. So I went right to the page that I'm going to teach this morning and it aligns. And this thing is getting on my nerves. Hold on. Let me just drop that on the floor. Every time I look, that, that, my little waist trainer that was in my seat was getting on my nose. I was getting a little distracted, right? That's also a lesson. We got to not be distracted in this hour, okay? I'm so serious, right? So um, what I wanted to share you all is that sometimes we underestimate. I want you all to get this because I do, I feel um, very, um, like displaced right now while I'm teaching, while I am on this prayer call right now. I feel very displaced. And this is why. Many times we underestimate the power of God that rests upon our life. Okay? Many times we underestimate the power of Christ that rests upon our lives. 
And so this morning, in the middle of the morning, my husband got up and it woke me up. And I was in bed and I was very frustrated because I wanted to go back to sleep. And I was tossing and I was turning and I was praying inwardly and I was thinking about businesses and things that I got to do and the things I got to launch. And I'm like, God, can I please go to sleep? And I, you know, I was just like putting a pillow, I mean, just putting the sheets over my head, putting the covers over my head. And I'm just like there. And I was like, let me get up, grab my phone, grab my glasses. I went straight to the prayer room. In my mind, I was going to first go to this computer and start working. But I had it to the prayer room being led by God. And so I was just in there like, okay, God, what are we going to do? And I pulled up Facebook and I saw this post from someone that I used to work with of a family member, of a family that was in a car accident. This man was on the phone with his wife. While he was on the phone with his wife, he heard a loud scream. He and his daughter was home. They were on the road headed to go prepare for what I could gather from the story to start to, to get the, the, the home that they was going to be moving to or they're moving to relocation. He's on the phone with his wife. She hollered and that was it. He kept calling back the phone went to voicemail only to discover that his wife and his other children were in a head on collision. And as I'm looking at this phone reading, I just instantly started to pray. And I instantly just stretched my hand and I began to pray in tongues. And I began to speak life because one of their daughters, which was the baby, the youngest daughter did not make it, burnt in the accident. They couldn't get her out of the car seat. So his wife is in serious critical condition. His other daughter is in critical condition, his son, and there he is in another state having to deal with all of this. And so I'm just praying and I am like, God, and God said, don't you question me. This is why I had you up this morning. I had you in a place so you can intercede for this family. And sometimes we underestimate the anointing that is over our lives. And sometimes when we don't even understand what we carry and the fact that we can get an answer through to heaven and that our prayers, they do go far and that our prayers they do reach dimensions and that our prayers they do reach the heart of God and God said don't you question me uh, I promise you all this morning I had to repent and I was like Lord forgive me and I begin to pray I begin to pray as if this was my family I don't even know who they are but I begin to just go in and it's just Pray and say, God, I pray that you would bring them out. I begin to speak life over his wife and life over the other children that are there and pray for him and his, his daughter and the other family members and friends that are affected by this tragedy that happened just in a nick of time. And so God needs you. He needs your prayers. He needs your voice. You carry weight. There is power over your life. You carry an anointing over your life and you have to open up your mouth. Open up your mouth and worship. Use your prayer language. Open up your mouth. As Tiana was talking about the infilling today, open up your mouth and begin to decree and declare and to speak life. Sometimes we do, because I was thinking, me, God, me? He was like, yes, you. This is why I had you up this morning. And so then he began to show me in the book that I wrote about prayer. And he said, just teach a little bit from this book this morning, how prayer is so powerful. Prayer is, is a great part of breakthrough. It is. Prayer does much. Prayer keeps us from sin. Prayer births things. Prayer guards our hearts. It protects our mind, our will, our emotion. Prayer brings supernatural protection. We need the supernatural protection of the Lord. Prayer purifies our motives. Prayer causes us to yield to his will for our lives. Prayer allows us to accomplish the will 
of God, that book that Danita talked about that's in heaven, that's the will of God for your life. Those blueprints that I talk about, the plans that he has for your life, in prayer, prayer, intercession, prayer, your heavenly language, prayer, pressing in, tapping in, prayer grants us authority and access where we may have not had it before. Even as God showed her another page in her book, that's another level of authority. That's another level of access. And I believe that this is what, because I saw a vision about a book last week, Danita. I saw a vision and I saw a page being turned. And so what I believe is not only is that vision just for her, but that vision is for the body of Christ. This is a prophetic vision for you on here today that God is turning another page in your book. And as you continue to yield your heart and your will to the Lord, and as you continue to obey him, and as you continue to surrender, and as you continue to say yes to your will, Lord, not my will, but thine will be done. Yes, I will go. Yes, I will be. Yes, I will become. Yes, I will intercede. Yes, I'm going to turn down some plates, hallelujah, and fast until I hear from heaven. Yes, I will obey you, God. Even when things begin to come up against me, I will still obey you. Prayer is so important and let it be. Prayer is so important. And let us be again reminded of the life of Jesus and also reflect on the fact that he prayed much during his time here on earth to accomplish his will. Hallelujah. Prayer is so very powerful, which is why the enemy will attack this area of your life. Do not let him win. Ask yourself, how is your prayer life? Sometimes it starts off gradually, but it, it can get uh, open door and the next thing you know you will not be praying as much as you did previously and then you realize that you're not praying at all the enemy will try to wear you out so you won't pray the enemy will try to distract you so that you won't pray the enemy will try to even harden your heart so that you won't pray god is even saying in this season and this hour to guard your heart i wrote this in the book years ago but as I wrote the, this in the book, this happened one morning while I was in prayer. Um, the presence of the Lord was so strong. The presence of the Lord filled the room and he began to show me that he was releasing strength and that the fact that God would have me to speak this word today during this time, even as you're praying and also fasting, I believe it's also prophetic for the now. You can reach this word, grab this word. It says here in this book, he was releasing strength for many so that our lives will be full of prayer. He showed me that many of his children's hearts had gotten hardy due to life circumstances, trials, disappointments, sufferings, and so much so. The other word while I was doing this prayer, I heard the word struggle. Sometimes struggles will allow us, our hearts to even get hardened. Hallelujah. It caused many to stop praying. Faith had been shaken and fear had even shut in. Battle weariness, you're tired of fighting, worn, worn all the time. Battle weariness next set in and so it begins to push you. Please understand our Christian life and walk depends upon our time with the Lord. Let me make it personal. Your Christian life, it depends, it is contingent upon your time with the Lord. Without it, we are nothing. Without it, you are are nothing. Prayer is communication with you and God. Yes, just, just you. Mm, yes, just you and him. Communion and fellowship with God. It is so vital and it is important to our spirit that oxygen is to a natural man. Yes, it is vital. Just as you need oxygen to survive in the natural, you need prayer to survive in the spirit. You need prayer to stay, you need your prayer life to stay in direct fellowship and communion with God. A prayer life is needed to be able to walk strong and tall in the spirit and to stand during moments of great trial. Hallelujah. That's the reading of part of the book found in fasting for breakthrough. I don't even know which chapter it comes out of, but the Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord 
will lift up a standard. God also says to pray without season. So Lord, I just thank you, God, for this day. We come before you right now, God, we repent of sin. We ask God that you would forgive us of sin. I pray, God, that even as we continue to fast and as we go deeper and as we go in, God, I pray, Lord, hallelujah, that our our, 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 that we will be strengthened. I thank you right now just for supernatural divine strength and even health. I see people going in deeper. God is saying, even come on in deeper. Even as you're on the fast, come on in deeper. Hallelujah. I hear shallow, shallow, shallow water. Come on in deep. Come on on in deep. There's some things that I want to show you. There's some mysteries that I want to reveal. There's some things that I want you to discover. I hear the word discover, even discover facets about yourself that you didn't even realize or recognize was there. Lord, I thank you right now, God, for your grace. I pray for your grace. And even, God, this morning as I'm praying, God, even on this prayer call, we lift up again this family that was even involved in this horrific tragedy. Lord, we pray, God, that you pull his wife through. We pray for the children, God. We pray, God, that you would turn it around. We pray, God, for miracles. I thank you right now for miracles, God, that they will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. I praise you right now, hallelujah, for miracles. I pray, God, that they will see beyond the veil. I pray that you're going to send them back for the work that they have to do and to fulfill, God, in the earth. As we understand that this was a terrible thing while the enemy sent. And I thank you right now, God. I pray, God, for this husband, Lord, that you would just strengthen and comfort his heart. I pray, God, that people will see this on social media, God, and they won't just say, I'm going to pray, but they will say, I'm going to pray, and they will also pray that they will bring, hallelujah, this family before you, Lord. And I just thank you right now, God, that we all will be strengthened in our prayer life, intercession, God. I thank you, God, that you will help us, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you will send angels, hallelujah, assigned to us, God, that will help us, God, the art of prayer. I thank you, God, that we will discipline this flesh, hallelujah. I thank you, God, just for, for you even removing rebellion. Because rebellion will cause us to think that we don't need you, God. Rebellion will cause us to think that we don't need to pray. I pray, God, that you will begin to drop the idols down over our lives. Idols, anything that we put before you, God. I pray, God, that we would release the pride. That we would drop the pride. Anything that we think, hallelujah, the times that we think we don't need you. We don't need to seek you, God, for decisions. We don't need to seek you, God, for the answers. We don't need to seek you, God, for our next set of instructions where we just do start doing things haphazardly, start doing things that we want to do, God. But I pray right now in the name of Jesus for you releasing holy angels, that these holy angels will come, hallelujah, in, that they will begin to deliver us, God, that they will begin to break down the pride in our heart. I pray, God, that they will break forth, they will break down rebellion, in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that they will break down stubbornness in the name of Jesus Christ, but all of that is witchcraft, idolatry. That's what the word says. So I thank you right now, hallelujah, for building us up. I thank you right now for strengthening us. Yes, divine supernatural, divine strength, divine supernatural strength in accordance to your will in the name of Jesus. I thank you, God. I pray, God, that we will grab our children, that we will pray with our children. Those of us that are married, that we will grab the hands of our spouses, that we will pray for our spouses. Oh, Rebe Siaka, Rebe Siandrable. So I just felt an attack even against marriages. Pico Rebe Sa, Mandrable, Si Rebe Siaka, Rebe Siandrable. So, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you would break every single attack coming up against marriages in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray right now that you will mute the mouths of these witches and these warlocks sent on assignment to break up marriages, to break the covenant of marriages in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray right now that the marriage angels will get involved. Those angels that you have even assigned to the marriages that they will get involved, hallelujah. I speak harmony, hallelujah, in the bedrooms. I speak intimacy in the bedrooms. I speak peace, I speak love, hallelujah, in the bedrooms. 
I thank you right now for godly covenants. Hallelujah. God, those that are even under attack, so that you're going to come on through. God, even the other day when I saw that vision of you moving something out of the way, and it was relatively fast, God, that you're going to come on through, that you're going to move obstacles out of the way. For those that are under heavy attack, I literally feel like a stab in my neck. I feel a stab in my neck right now. So yes, and we cancel every single plan of the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. God, you said the word rebuilt. So we revoke the plans of the enemy. We abort, we rescind, we cancel, we cut them off in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray right now in the name, I feel fire even on my head, mental attacks. Those that are even suffering in their mind, God, those that are going through in their mind, depression, suicide, they're angry, they're bitter, they're feeling rejected, they want to quit, they want to cave in, they want to call it out. I pray, God, for them this morning. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you will release warring angels that will go in, hallelujah, that they will begin to, I feel, I see, like, in the vision of a dagger. There is, like, daggers are even in the heads, hallelujah, of many during this time. I'm, I'm, I'm literally seeing daggers that are, like, just in the head, hallelujah, where there has been demonic attacks sent against the mind to, 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 to really frustrate the mind. I thank you right now. If you're on here, you will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. I decree and I declare that you have a sound mind in the name of Jesus Christ. You have a sound mind. I thank you right now, God. I praise you for deliverance. I feel deliverance on me. I feel the anointing of deliverance right now. And I thank you, God, for fire angels. Let them be released. Hallelujah from your headquarters, God. Let them be released from heaven. Let the heavenly host, hallelujah, do what the heavenly hosts do. And they war. They war on behalf of your people. I thank you right now that they are warned, that they are going to win. I speak victory in the name of Jesus. I thank you right now for success. I thank you right now for victory in the name of Jesus. We are under attack. The family union is under attack. I pray, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you, hallelujah, will release God. Those, hallelujah, that are asleep, God, that you will wake them up, God, that you will deal with them, God. We need the prayers of the righteous. As your words say, the prayers of the righteous, they are there much. And I pray, God, for more that they will more will fast, more will pray, more will discipline themselves, that they will speak hallelujah in their heavenly language, and that they will bust through in the realm of the spirit and to some things, hallelujah, I answer. So God has said, cover yourself from this hour, beloved. Cover yourself, cover your family, cover yourself, cover your family in this hour. Cover yourself and cover your family in this hour. Cover your loved ones, cover your friends. God is dealing with you. If a name drop and you ain't heard from that person in a while and you're like, I don't know why I'm thinking about them, just go ahead on and pray. Hallelujah, just go on on and pray for them. God is saying we are under attack. Yes, we are. Hallelujah, but he, has given us the war, the war tools to be able to battle. Hallelujah. And I believe as many are fasting, even during this time, as we enter into um, the newish, I mean, the Jewish new year, we're about to enter into a new year, right? There's a lot of breaking. There's a lot that's happening. There's a lot that's being poured out. There are rams that he, dimensions that he has taken his children into. He has taken them to places of breakthrough. He has taken them into places of victory. But even as God is doing that, the enemy is also fighting. So we just have to be mindful, okay? So we just have to be mindful of that. So I believe that that is all that God will have me to say. 
if you're on here, uh, we also pray for no untimely death, no premature death in the name of Jesus for our families, God, our friends and our loved ones. And if you're on here, you do not know the Lord in the power of your sin. You're not saved and your name is not written in the Lamb Book of Life. Then I want to read with you the scripture inviting you to receive the Lord this morning. In Romans 10, starting at verse 9, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord and shall believe in thy heart that God is raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoso believeth on him shall not be ashamed. But there is no difference between a Jew or the Greek, for the same Lord of all over all is which to all who call upon him for whosoever shall call on the name of the lord they shall be saved will you call on them will you give him your life will you repent who will say that's me i don't want to do this anymore by myself i need you take my hand i extend my hand and I humble myself to follow your plan. It's a beautiful thing to follow the plans of God. I would dare not say life will be a bed of roses, but it will be easier. It will be. And even as the prayer sisters ministered today, we all have different testimonies and different stories. By the grace of God, when Tiana was sharing her testimony, I said, that's great. The grace of God was there. It says, not by, uh, it's, it's only by grace, not that any man should boast, right? That you are saved. It's only by his grace. And that was the word that I heard as she was ministering. Grace, grace. And guess what? You're still here today because of grace. It's just been grace. Grace. And so while the grace is still there for you to get it right, all you've got to do is just accept the invitation, that nudge, and that pull. 